Hello everyone and welcome back to Mistletoe Online, Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories, Riku's Story, or Reverse Rebirth Mode. I'm gonna call it Riku's Story because that's what it is. In the last episode, we started as Riku, we shut the, the door to darkness, and we entered into this weird castle place? Uh, that's, Riku doesn't know what it is, but we know that it's Castle Oblivion, home of the Organization 13. Now, we are on the basement 12th floor. Sora ended on the 13th floor, but when we go up, let's see what happens. Don't I even warrant a hello, Lexius? What is going on here, Zexion? I want an explanation. Nice to see you too, Vexen. It's such a shame. The organization used to be the rope that bound us together. You're only number six. How dare you? Let it go, Vexen. Zexion, tell us. What did you detect? Visitors, I picked up two scents in the castle's lowest basement. One of them was Maleficent. Don't be absurd. The witch is gone. She cannot return from the realm of darkness of her own volition. If you would let me finish, the scent belonged not to the real Maleficent, but to a very convincing double. But I truly cannot say much beyond that, since the double is no more. Our other visitor saw to that. And who is it? I do not know for sure. But the scent was very similar to that of the Superior. And yet, not exactly the same, was it? This truly piques my curiosity. Now, what to do? We wait, see what develops. Who are these guys? Something smells funny. What's that scent? It's so familiar. <gasps> darkness. It's the smell of darkness. <sighs> I can't believe this is happening. The darkness even seeped into my skin. Don't worry, Riku. <gasps> Your Majesty! What happened? I can see right through you. Funny, huh? I can only send a bit of my power to this place. That's why I've got a request for you. Request? Listen, Riku. Just because darkness holds you, don't let go of who you are. You've got to fight the darkness inside you. It won't be easy to do, I know. But please don't forget, even in the darkest darkness, there's always a little bit of light. Light within darkness. You and I have seen it. The far welcoming light inside the door to darkness. The light of Kingdom Hearts, it will show you the way. Please don't give up, believe in the light. That's a request from my heart. Okay, I'll do my best. Trust me, I'll try to find a way to reach you. I'll get there, I promise. Oh, you're an illusion. Don't worry, we shook hands in our hearts, remember? We're connected, you and me. 
Guess we are. Interesting. So it seems that Riku even smells like darkness. He has become so darkness incarnate that he can literally smell it on him. Now, those three Organization 13 members that we've seen, two of them we've never seen before. One of them, Vexen, we saw during Sora's story. Now, right here, I will just want to show you that this is a warp. Uh, we can warp between floors. Not a big deal. Definitely not needed right now or anything, but I thought I would point that out. Also, I highly suggest saving. It's definitely weird indeed. We The last time we saw Vexen, we knew that he was a scientist of sorts that was working with the organization, and he actually created what was a replica Riku, a, a dark version of Riku that was basically a puppet that Sora fought against. So I guess we're going to see how that happened and how he got to do that. But I thought that was worth mentioning just to remind you of what was happening. Now, you will notice that we are on the 11th floor. That means that we are working our way up, whereas Sora was working his way down. Now, we are going to go to Agrabah. That is going to be the first world that we will visit. And with one of the most annoying boss battles in this game, to be honest with you. And we get the Key of Beginnings card, and we get introduced to Agrabah, which means we get the awesome Agrabah music and the awesome Agrabah enemies, including bandits and fat bandits and all of that jazz. Now, we can also go ahead and look at our deck real quick, and you will see that we have a friend card. That friend card is, of course, uh, Mickey, which is going to be super useful. Now, we also have a Fat Bandit card. This is an enemy card that is only exclusive to Agrabah. You cannot use it in any other world. It deals more damage when striking enemies from behind. Uh, I honestly don't think that's useful at all. We will be dealing with Dragon Maleficent. Sacrifices reload speed to power up attack cards. That's going to be predominantly what we end up using uh, this whole time. Now, I'm going to clear this room. There's only one door to go, so if you want to continue, uh, I'm just going to clear this first, get some map cards and some levels. So let's go ahead and uh, let's kill a shadow. All right. All right, so in this fight, we ended up leveling up. So, of course, we're going to put our point into our attack points just to become a little bit more powerful. All right, so in that final battle of this room, we ended up getting another level boost. Now, I'm actually going to put this into our health. Uh, our DP is important, but it's not super important just yet. All right, now we can use this door, the only door that we can use, and we need a one card. So let's go ahead and use our Sleeping Darkness just to easy peasily do this. And that will, that will let us intro, intro into here. Now, I actually want to show you guys something, so I'm going to purposely get into this fight for the purposes of showing you. Now, I'm going to go ahead and use my Maleficent card, and I'm going to hope that we end up getting the card that I am looking for, the reason why I want to show this. So this battle is going to, I'm going to make sure that it, it goes a little longer. Uh, we're going to make sure that we just, you know, also fight back a little bit. But I want to make sure that we are able to show you some cool things that you can do in Agrabah now that you have access to a friend card in the form of Mickey. So here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. If we do Mickey and then two attack cards, we will get Holy Burst, which will do a tremendous amount of damage, uh, which is super, super useful. I highly recommend using that instead of using Mickey by himself. And we will also intro into uh, uh, Dark Mode, so I can show you a Slate, Dark Fyraga. That will pretty much eliminate any Heartless at this level. Now, Dark Fyraga, anywhere from uh, a certain amount of uh, points. Now, Dark Break. This is the one that you're going to be using all the time. Dark Break is amazing. It's 5 to 15. You can use it, and you just keep bouncing on top of the enemy. It's super powerful. So, I just wanted to show you that, and now we're going to clear the room. All right, we've cleared this entire room. Let's go ahead and use this door, the last door that we can use uh, in this area, anyways. And we're going to go ahead and use a... I'm thinking a roulette card here. The only reason for that is because it will pretty much guarantee that we get more map cards. And since we're in such a dire dire need for map cards, I, uh, I recommend using this as soon as you can. And this will lead us to a room that actually leads right to a story door. However, I highly recommend don't using, uh, not using that door right away. All right, so not only do we get a map card roulette thing here, which I want to, I really want to get this meeting ground. Uh, meeting grounds for us are going to be some of the best cards we can get. So we'll go ahead, use that. We got it, so that's perfect. The roulette card just goes by so slow. So we can add that to our deck, which is beautiful. And we did hit a level up as well, so we are now level 10. I'm actually going to throw um, 
Uh, let's do, we're gonna throw more into our HP, so our HP is going to increase now, and I'm gonna clear this room, because we do have a boss fight coming up, and I wanna make sure we're as ready for that as we can be. And we leveled up yet again to level 11, so we'll go ahead and increase our attack by one. Oh yeah. Now that the entire room is clear, we can go ahead, head down to the first story room. In fact, it's the only story room. And this is going to be a common thread throughout. So we're gonna go ahead and use a level four here just because we can, and we will use the key to beginnings card. Now, be prepared because as soon as you go through this door, you're gonna be facing a boss. No longer are we, do we need to worry about any key to truth cards, nothing like that. We are going right into Genie Jafar. No story, nothing. All we're doing is facing these dark, these dark enemies now. And you will notice that every world is going to be this short. Seriously. You literally just go to the room, the next story room, and you do it. So we're gonna jump ahead, hit him as hard as we can. Uh, I actually wanna switch to our Maleficent here. Uh, we did get hit by that, but I don't really think, honestly, that you need to worry about dying at all in this, um, in this boss fight. Now, we're just gonna be jumping and trying to get any attacks that we can on Iago. Now, again, this is just like pretty much any Jafar fight, uh, for the most part. You wanna hit this Iago that's flying around, this parrot that's holding his lamp, and don't get hit by any of his uh, things. Now, since he does use level eight cards, it is kind of hard, actually, to be able to card break him. So instead, what we're gonna do is not attack when he's attacking. And instead, we're just going to hit uh, this Iago as hard as we can. Now, he's going to sort of fall. You actually have to jump to attack this Iago, and if you try to do it like this, as you can see, you will actually just not hit him at all, which is, you know, not very useful. Now, we were actually able to card break him there, uh, which was useful for us. And now we're going to make sure that we are ready to attack this Iago yet again with a slate. Uh, unfortunately, that didn't really work, but we can end up using uh, our our Mickey. And let's see if we can actually damage him. I actually don't think we can. Yeah, so that was, that was a complete waste. Uh, but that's okay. I wanted to show you that we couldn't actually do that. Now, for some reason, I can't actually find Iago. So we'll just break him real quick because we can. Uh, I would really, really like to find Iago. There he is. All right. We'll go ahead and finish this with a slate. Or we'll just completely miss all of that. So this is what I mean. is This fight is kind of stupid because we can't actually use normal combos on the ground. We have to, like, jump and do it. It doesn't feel good, man. It doesn't feel good. So we took down Genie Jafar. And upon doing so, we will get one of the best enemy cards in the game for us. Which is the GD Jafar card. I really, really don't like that fight. I don't think it's designed well. Uh, it doesn't help because every combo initiator that we try to use, the first attack in a combo, is going to miss Iago completely. Uh, I really don't like it. That's actually the second take that I took doing that fight because the first one, um, it was just really sloppy because it is it is a really hard fight to execute very well. Um, so I do, I do, you know, I feel kind of crappy that... Uh, I did that. So, we only have one room that we can open here, uh, but I want to show you the Genie Jafar card. Stops enemies from breaking attack cards you use. What? That is so powerful, dude. So powerful. So we'll go ahead and use this door. We'll open it with a three or higher. Uh, luckily, we have a Looming Darkness, so we'll just go ahead and use that, because obviously, we want as many levels as we can, as we can get. So, we're gonna clear the rooms. And we leveled up yet again and got a meeting ground card, which is perfect. Now, we're going to put some points into our DP, which is going to increase it by two, uh, just because we haven't actually done that yet. All right, let's go ahead, clear this. We cleared this room, so now we can go ahead and use this door. Uh, we need a four or higher. I would really like to use a meeting ground, but I feel like we should save our meeting grounds. So instead, let's use a mingling worlds card. All right, let's continue. There is only one door that we can use that we haven't used yet. So let's actually go down and make sure that we use this without getting hit. All right, we were able to do it. So we'll go ahead and use a level five or higher. We'll, we'll use Feeble Darkness level five. Perfect, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And that will open up one of the last doors that we need to go through, in fact. This will actually lead to the end of Agrabah. Or I'm completely wrong. I'm totally wrong. 
We didn't need to open that door at all. Stupid Cory. Nope. Instead, we can actually go right through this one. This will actually lead us to the final one. I should have known because we actually didn't use this door yet. Uh, this isn't a door that we opened. And this will lead us to Conqueror's Respite. I should have known. I wasted a card. That's fine. Uh, obviously, if you need to get health, you can go ahead and do that. But it doesn't totally matter because right up here is, again, it's Conqueror's Respite. So, of course, there's going to be a save point right up here for us. Just sitting all nice and pretty. All right, and now let's continue to the basement 11th floor exit hall. Weird. There's nothing here. All right, well, let's just continue to the 10th floor then. I have identified the scent. It is Riku. Riku, you say? Has he emerged from the realm of darkness? His existence, it was once doubled in the darkness. Fascinating. That's why you mistook him for the superior. The dark power given to Riku facilitated his escape from its realm. What I want to know is why he appeared here in Castle Oblivion. That's really quite simple. His existence resonates with that of another hero. Sora is in the castle? He arrived earlier. Marluxia is already using Namine's unique powers to meddle with Sora's heart. Without even bothering to consult us. It seems he desperately wants the Keyblade Master for himself. What a foolish plan indeed. Sora's is not such an interesting existence. The entity that holds true value is Riku, the hero of darkness. The hero of darkness. I do believe that is the first time we have ever heard of Riku referred to as the hero of darkness. What even is that? So it would appear that Riku's story begins a little bit after Sora's starts. Because Sora has already been here. He arrived here earlier, before we did. Very interesting indeed. In the next episode, we will continue on to the 10th floor, and we will be going to Monstro, the next world that we can go to, and see what's going on with these Organization 13 members. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big old thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And appearing on screen right now is a video that was chosen by YouTube specifically for you. And if you want to get caught up in what happened in Sora's story in Chain of Memories, there should be a playlist showing up on screen as well. You can click that. And if you really, really want to support the channel, be sure to click on the Patreon page where you can get rewarded just for supporting the channel. Thank you all very much for watching, and remember, never give up, never surrender to the darkness.